Welcome everyone to our final breakfast. This has been a grand adventure for Andrea and myself. We have so enjoyed bringing you God's Word daily and keeping us all connected during the pandemic. We are glad that you are here to see us off. As part of our Wise Investment series, I could think of no better lesson to end with than this one. In fact, this is a great lesson to end this whole show. In Luke 14, Jesus noticed a large crowd was following him, and he turned around and told them that they must hate their father and mother, wife and children, in comparison to their love for him if they wanted to be his follower. Oh, but if calling out the religion of familyanity was not enough, he gave two examples of people who did not count the cost of a project. One was a building scenario where the developer started construction but didn't have the money to finish it. The other scenario was a king who went to war with half the men he needed and with no plan. Both the carpenter and the king looked foolish. But Jesus was getting to the apex, the summit of what he was trying to say, and he laid it out with this sentence for all of us to consider today. So you cannot become my disciple without giving up everything you own. Other religious leaders might ask you to give a percent of your income or make a pilgrimage or say a few prayers, but this Jesus person, he requires everything. Everything. Why would Jesus make such a ridiculous statement? Who does he think he is? Oh, well, let me tell you. He thinks he is the way, the truth and the life, and that no one comes to the Father except through him. He believes that he is the resurrection and the life, and that those who believe in him, even if they die physically, will rise. He thinks he is the judge of all the earth. He thinks angels belong to him. He thinks that he sends prophets. He thinks the whole Old Testament is about him. He thinks he existed before Abraham. He thinks that where you spend eternity is entirely dependent on how you respond to him. He thinks that if you sin, it is against him directly, which gives him the authority to forgive. So why give up everything for him? Hmm. Why indeed? That is the question any thoughtful person would ask before considering Christianity. Why give up everything? That is ridiculous generosity. In short, we give up everything because he is everything better. He is more valuable than any money, any belonging. And if we hang on to any other thing beside him, we are essentially drinking from a dry cup, eating from an empty plate. Jesus is looking for and offering intimacy with us, an intimacy that a casual relationship will not create. He is looking for a covenant relationship where both parties say, all of me for all of you, where all I have is yours, whether in sickness or in health, for better, for worse, in riches or poverty, we are his. To have intimacy requires a giving up of our independence, including independence regarding financial decisions. Bottom line, if our money is not his, we are not his. If we are not his, we belong to someone or something else. And we are living outside our design, outside of real life. When Jesus says you cannot be my disciple without giving up everything you own, he was extending his hand, offering for you to join him, to be by his side, to enjoy him, to savor him, and to allow him to love you with an unmatchable love. If you want to make a wise investment, Jesus must have all your money, but more, he must have all of you. After all these hundreds of lessons, our hope at Breakfast at Tracy's is that you have become fully his, being more devoted to him than you are to your spouse, 
your children, your career, your comfort, or your cash. He truly is worth more than anything this world can offer. May the Lord's wonderful love surround you today and always. Let's pray. Our Father, have all of us. Have everything, our homes, our relationships, our bank account. Even if you took all, took them all so that by tonight we were naked, unemployed, sick, alone, and homeless. If we had you, may we consider ourselves wealthy beyond imagination. May you be above all things our wisest investment. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Take care. Come in. Hey, um, were you on the phone or? No, I, I was just talking to my church family. What? No, yeah, I've, I've been having breakfast. You know, we talked about this. I've been having breakfast with my church family every day for the last two years. Honey, there's nobody here. Oh, seriously. Like, they've even sent me letters and stuff saying they really enjoy this time. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, so you've been coming down here every day for the last two years to have breakfast with yeah. your church family. Yeah. All right. Um, you know... Pandemic's been hard on us all. Um, how about today we go out for breakfast? Okay, sounds good. All right, let's go. All right. Hey, Breakfast Club. Hey, Breakfast Club. Hey, Breakfast Club. Hey, Breakfast Club. You are watching Breakfast at Tracy's, where we attempt to serve up a hearty spiritual breakfast in about five minutes. It has been such an honor and privilege to bring Breakfast at Tracy's to you every day for the last two years. Tracy thought this was originally going to be just a few weeks of connecting with our church family when COVID first began and we were closed as a church. But we are now 678 episodes later. And those episodes are gonna remain in an archive on our YouTube channel. And we would encourage you to go back and watch them again. Continue to start your day with Breakfast at Tracy's because there's always something new that can be gleaned and learned from God's word. Thank you to our many loyal viewers Thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your letters. Thank you for your emails. Thank you from Breakfast at Tracy's. Take care, everyone.